the right way to look at your ROI is not the ROI that the business is generating uh, on paper, but to look at how much of this money you are actually, uh, or how much of this money actually stays with you after you pay your taxes. Now that is where the beauty of this business comes in. Uh, the income that you generate with this business is completely tax free. In today's video, I'll talk about the profitability of a hydroponic farm for growing leafy greens. If you want to get into hydroponics and you have, if you are thinking about setting up a farm for growing leafy greens, do watch this video till the end. We will cover five important things into this. The first one is what should be the minimum project size that you should undertake for commercial viability. Number two, how much it might cost you to set up such a farm. Number three, once you have set up such a farm, what are the kind of yields or production that you can expect from the farm? Number four, we will get into the financials. We will get into what is the kind of revenue you can expect, uh, how much it might cost you on a monthly basis to run that farm, what is the kind of profit that you can make. And number five and the last thing we will cover is the kind of returns that you can expect on the investment you are making. So if you're interested, please go through the end. Just a couple of disclaimers. Number one, most of the data that we are sharing is actually based on the real data and experiences that we have seen, but experiences will vary from place to place. So when you look at this data, please do some adjustments, modifications for your scenario. And number two, this data is based on farm setup using our technology. So if you use a different technology, the numbers may obviously be a little different than the numbers which are here. So do your due diligence and then look at the data. Now, before we get into these points, let's define the boundaries of our project. So that we are clear that uh, this is the specific kind of project that we are talking about and uh, all the numbers should make sense in respect to the specific project. Now, first thing that we need to decide when we are setting up a farm for a hydroponics for growing leafy green is the kind of environment we need to create for the plants. We can go for a fully climate controlled high tech farm. We can also go for naturally ventilated farms if the environment allows us. We can also go for net house if the environment allows us. In our case, we are going to look at a farm which is a fully climate controlled high tech farm so that irrespective of what's the climate outside, you are able to get production inside. And essentially most of the profits that you make generally come in off season. So to get off season profit in this kind of scenario, it's very important that you have the capability to grow, produce when others are not able to grow. Looking at that particular aspect, we are going for a climate controlled polyhouse farm. That's the first decision point that we have made. Now the second decision is about the kind of technology, kind of hydroponic technology we want to use. There are multiple different technologies which can be used to grow leafy greens. And the two most prevalent ones are NFT and DWC. NFT stands for nutrient film technique. DW stands for deep water culture. I'm assuming that you have already gone through multiple videos. You understand what these techniques are. NFT is basically, you would have seen multiple videos with white channels, flat channels in which plants are growing. This is called NFT. Then deep water culture uh, is a technique where there are large water bodies, uh, large water channels or bodies uh, in which uh, plants are growing. These both are wonderful techniques. And in fact, they are perfect substitute for each other. Where you are using NFT, you can use DWC or where you are using DWC, you can use NFT. Uh, having said that, both have their advantages and disadvantages. And depending upon your specific condition, one technique may be better than another. What we are going to do for this particular use case example is we are going to look at DWC uh, as a choice of technology for growing leafy greens. So this was our second decision point. The third decision point is do we want to run the farm through humans or do we want to automate most of the critical tasks in the farm? So in our scenario, uh, we, we also have a choice to do semi-automation, where we only automate the nutrient and uh, let's say the climate. But in our case, what we recommend is, or what we will do is, we will look at a totally fully automated farm, so that there are no human errors and we can always get the peak level of production which is possible by using technology. So the three decision points that we have made for this particular business case, number one, climate control polyhouse, Number two, deep water culture as the technology. Number three, full automation. Now that we have defined the contours or boundaries or the decisions for our farm, let's 
look at what should be the basic minimum size, which was the first point that we wanted to cover. If we want to get into hydroponics and uh, go leafy greens using hydroponics. So I would very, very strongly advise not to go for a project which is less than 1000 square meter or 10,000 square feet. If you want to go big, if you want to look at the ideal size, one acre is the ideal size. If you can't do one acre, go for half acre. If you can't do half acre, you can go for quarter acre. But below quarter acre, finding financial viability will be very, very difficult. This is what we have seen in our experiences. If you have a specific use case, let's say you want to go for a smaller size because you are doing it as a POC and then you want to establish some, some numbers or you want to understand some crops and then you want to raise money further, please go ahead. If you have a different use case, let's say you are growing crops because you want to process them, you have a buyer already in place, please go ahead with that. But if that's not the scenario, if you're planning to set up your farm and then you are planning to sell fresh produce in the market, I would again, I'm repeating, I would again strongly advise don't go for a farm which is less than quarter acre in size. So for our case, for this farm, we will define quarter acre as the size of the farm. And now we will come to the point number two. If we are setting up a fully climate controlled high-tech poly house using deep water culture as a technology with complete automation to grow leafy greens, then how much it might cost? The cost will vary from vendor to vendor, depending upon what they are giving, what they are not giving, and what they include, what they don't include. Now, for this particular project, the cost will be anywhere between 50 to 55 lakhs. If you remove things, for example, you remove technology out of it, you remove automation, or instead of our climate control, fully automated uh, high-tech farm, you go for a low-tech farm, the cost may come down. But for this example, we will look at a cost of 55 lakh, and we will look at a farm where we have minimum risk of failure. Now let's talk about point number three, which is, let's say if we have set up such a farm, what is the kind of yield or production that we can expect from this kind of a farm? Now here I would want to clarify one thing. Many people wrongly, mistakenly assume that more the number of plants in a farm, more will the yield. It doesn't work like that because different plants need different space to grow. If you keep too many plants together, they will not be able to grow. You will not get more yield if, uh, as compared to uh, having a farm which have less plant, but each plant is growing to a larger size because it has space to grow. Now with that understanding, the number of plants in a farm will actually vary depending upon what you are growing. So let's say if you are setting up a farm for growing herbs, in a quarter acre you can even get 40,000 plants. And if you are setting up a farm only for growing very big head plants, let's say you, are, you want to grow iceberg lettuce, then 15 to 16,000 is the maximum plant that you will be able to fit in the farm. Uh, so in our case, what we will look at is we will look at three different crops. Uh, it's a very specific project we are talking about. So we'll only look at spinach, we'll look at lettuces, and we'll look at kale. If these are the three crops we are growing, then in the farm, roughly we should be able to fit in around 20,000 plants. Now again, all these plants have their different cycles. Some plants will give you yield in four weeks, these are multi cuts Some plants will give you yield in six weeks, and these cycles will also vary with the climatic conditions. Roughly, a plant will give you around 120 to 140 grams of yield, uh, but the life cycle to get that yield will be between four to six weeks. So we will convert all of this on a monthly number so that we can do monthly calculation. Uh, what we understand is every month you should be able to get roughly around 100 grams from each plant which means that if you have 20,000 plants, then you should be able to get around two tons or 2,000 kg of produce every month. So that's your point number three, what is the kind of yield that you can expect from such a farm. Now, before getting into the financials, I would uh, ask you to, or I would strongly urge you to do some research at your end. Uh, open up uh, the apps of online players, look at the hydroponic produce, look at the prices at which they are selling these three producers spinach or baby spinach and uh, kale and lettuces and look and calculate that price and convert it uh, into a per kg price so that you know what is an end consumer paying for this kind of produce in your local market. Now, whatever that number will be, you will be selling your produce at around 40 to 50 percent lesser uh, from that number if you are selling it to someone into a B2B market. So your price, in my understanding, that you will be able to fetch will lie anywhere between 100 to 120 rupees per kg at a B2B level. 
some cases you will be selling at a little lower than this some cases you will be selling at a little higher than this but 100 to 120 is a number which is a fair assumption which is a fair thing we have seen in different markets in different cities in india which people are able to command very easily in a b2b market in some markets it even goes to 160 rupees per kg but let's look at these two numbers and if we are looking at 2 kg per month and a price of 100 to 120 rupees per kg we are saying that our revenue per year will be between 24 lakh to 28 lakh which is 2.4 lakh to 2 lakh to 2.4 lakh per month so with such a farm we will be able to generate a revenue between 24 lakh to 28 lakh per annum uh, in the steady state now this is your revenue this is not your profit to run the farm there will be expenses uh, the biggest expense or the two biggest expenses in running such a farm are manpower and electricity now when it comes to manpower and electricity in both of these cases since we are using automation since it's a high-tech farm we will be able to save some cost for example let's talk about electricity first by using our automation what we have observed and the data is there published uh, with proofs on our website uh, we have observed a 39 percent reduction in electricity cost for this kind of farm of the exactly same size that i'm talking to you about uh, after this reduced consumption what you should expect if your farm is in a very very hot climate uh, to what you should expect is to spend a maximum of around 2.5 lakh rupees per annum for electricity if the farm is in a colder climate your expense will be less but if it's in the very hot climate still 2.5 is maximum at which it will cap if you are using automation now let's talk about manpower for such a small scale farm it will be very difficult for you to hire a very high skilled agronomist because uh, uh, hiring a very high skilled agronomist with four or five year experience itself will cost you four to five lakh per annum uh, but again since you are going to use technology which will make all the decisions which an agronomist should make you don't need to hire a very high cost agronomist you will just work with uh, two or three labors in the farm and uh, let's say you will spend around uh, 3.5 lakh uh, ballpark in a year uh, in your labor cost then you will also need to spend money in nutrients and seeds that will cost around 2.4 lakhs per annum and if you add all of this we see that the cost comes to around 8 to 8.5 lakh per annum but there will definitely be cost that we are not accounting there will be some overheads so let's keep a buffer for that and we say that for this kind of farm you will spend close to 10 lakh rupees per annum in your expenses so on a revenue of 24 lakhs to 28 lakh you will be doing an expense of around 10 lakh which means your profit will be between 14 to 18 lakhs so this is how the numbers look like in terms of financials you can expect to make anywhere between 1.2 to 1.5 lakh profit per month from such a farm when you're investing 55 lakhs now let's jump to the uh, returns on investment so if you are making an investment of 55 lakhs in setting up such a farm by looking at the numbers that we are talking to you about the returns that you are uh, earning is around 25.5 percent so essentially uh, the break even is coming somewhere between uh, uh, 3.75 to 4 years towards the end of fourth year is when you are receiving your break even and this is what we have seen practically happening you might see many people telling you with hydroponic you achieve a break even in two years or 2.5 years or the money doubles in every year that's not what we have seen happening uh, in the real world if you keep increasing the size of your farm you will gain some benefit but anything less than three years is very very difficult to achieve when you're starting up maybe once you have done your first cycle first three or four years then you will achieve a steady state but initially it's difficult so around four years is something which we will say you need to keep into account realistically uh, to look at profitability which gives you an roi of around 25 percent so for this business model you can reasonably expect an roi of 25 percent or a break even of around four years uh, now this roi of 25 percent which appears to you as 25 percent is actually much better than that the reason is this entire profit that you are making is tax-free so essentially if you have, have to compare hydroponics to some other business in which you have to pay taxes to the government in that business if you are earning 33 percent roi that 33 percent is equal to a 25 percent roi here because after paying taxes to the government you will have to 25 percent only 
so this way the business makes a lot of sense and it's a growing industry uh, the prices of the end produce or the prices of hydroponic produce uh, food is rising at a much rapid rate as compared to the rise in the cost of inputs that's the experience we have in last seven to eight years and with every passing year the profitability of hydroponic business is improving if you want to get into it then uh, i would strongly encourage you to talk to our team understand the numbers understand the business case and then get into it and uh, again uh, i think one more time will strongly discourage you from going for a project which is less than quarter acre in size uh, that's it from my side for this particular business case look at it understand the numbers and uh, go for it and if you need any help please do reach out to us thank you take care and all the best